Hello, I'm Martin Cherney from XPIM and this is three-part video for software developers who want to put BIM in their project. Now that may be desktop or cloud or web application, but most of that will be actually run for online and cloud applications. We'll have a look at IFC standard. Uh, it's open source .NET implementation in XBIM. Uh, we'll have a look at the initial setup uh, for geometry processing and how to create a proof of concept for the 3D visualization. And the second part, uh, we'll have a look at how to take it to production. And in third part, uh, we'll have a look at what you could do uh, if you wanted to actually offload many concerns uh, to an external service which would do uh, all the work for you. So let's start. Why actually do it, right? You're probably a tech enthusiast uh, and just like the idea of BIM, uh, or your customer wants it, or your job boss just told you uh, do it. In any case, uh, you did your research, right? And you probably found uh, IFC standard. Uh, it's great. It's created and maintained by Building Smart which is international organization. Uh, many big developers actually, or big development companies uh, are members of Building Smart. Uh, the main versions of IFC are published as ISO 16739. It's supported by all BIM authoring tools or environments uh, like Revit, ArcGET, Tecla, Nemechek, and many others. Uh, it has free documentation, it's actively developed. Uh, the current version is IFC 4.3, uh, which supports buildings, railways, bridges, tunnels, ports, uh, and many others. Uh, it's defined using express schema, uh, with physical representation being step 21 files. Uh, it also has derived XSD schema, uh, which obviously uh, is used to create XML files, which many people like more. Uh, but I will probably have another video where I'll explain why uh, Step 21 and Express are much better for modeling of buildings and construction models in general. Anyway, here you can see the link uh, to the documentation. So you can check it yourself. Uh, as I said, it's free, it's open. He'll probably like it. Uh, however, you'll see that it has 876 entity types, uh, which will map to object types or classes uh, in, uh, in your software developer view, and it has 436 defined types and enumerations. So you might be tempted to implement it yourself, it's open standard at the end, but well, that means you would have to implement 1,312 types or classes or structures uh, and you would have to maintain it. Uh, that is just one of three currently used uh, IFC versions. So it's not that easy. And then when, have a look at, when you have a look at geometry, if you want to visualize it, uh, present it, uh, it's stored as text definitions, right? Uh, and it supports pretty much all types of geometries used in various CAT tools. So you would find BREP representations, extrusions, uh, sweeps, CSG geometries, uh, and many other uh, ways to describe the geometry in there. Uh, if you want to present anything on the screen, you have to process it somehow into simple triangles and colors, right? So. Uh, if you are a .NET developer, you probably found our open source Xbit toolkit. If you are not, uh, you may want to skip to part three of this video, where I'll have a look at platform neutral service you can use to actually uh, get the data processed for you, so you can actually easily integrate it straight in any platform, any language. So uh, the toolkit uh, is open source. Uh, you can find the code on GitHub. Uh, it has a CDDL license, 
which is very permissive. Uh, many companies use it worldwide to uh, build their BIM capabilities. Uh, the documentation is not perfect, but there is some. Uh, there are a few examples. Uh, we'll have a look at one specific example, which you may use very quickly and easily to develop a proof of concept. Uh, it has minimal number of dependencies, uh, probably three or four, uh, pretty much standard Microsoft dependencies uh, for logging, for example. And we do keep it up to speed with IFC development. So at the moment, it implements IFC 2x3, IFC 4, and IFC 4.3, uh, which are all currently used uh, on projects uh, that are supported by BIM authoring environments. Uh, this is example I mentioned. You can find it on our website. Uh, and it simply takes uh, the geometry and converts that to WaxBIM. Now, what's WaxBIM, right? Uh, we have our own viewer, which we built specifically for BIM models. Uh, and for this viewer, we defined a WaxBIM file format. Uh, if you have a look in the code, it's not complex. Uh, it just contains loads of triangles uh, and it is just all optimized for building models which don't tend to contain any walking creatures or anything so this is they are usually quite detailed engineering models and the viewer and the backspin format are optimized for this uh, it takes probably 10 lines of code to implement the minimal functionality to convert from IFC to this WebBIM. And it takes probably at least three lines of JavaScript uh, to load that WebBIM file and uh, show it on the screen. That's not much, right? So you can do it quite quickly, probably in an hour, you may put together a proof of concept, right? So you have your controls. If it's an application, you would reference two NuGet packages, uh, one NPM package for your front end, and there you go. Uh, it's very easy, right? You have your web application, you can get IFC file from the client or from elsewhere. It can convert it to something which can be presented. Uh, and when you load it to your front end, you can just show it, right? Desktop application, web application, uh, mobile application, very easy, right? Probably in one or two hours you get there and your proof of concept is done. Congratulations, uh, you're there. Uh, you can show it to your boss, you can show it to your client uh, and you can sleep well until you actually get bigger models and more clients using the service, etc. Uh, then it gets more tricky, which is what we will explore at part two uh, of this video. So, see you soon.